What's up, guys? Nepenthes here, and welcome back to another episode of the Arsenal Evo RTG. Today, we are going to go through our weekend league qualification, and we're going to start by Evoing another one of our players. Now, we hit Dennis Burkamp out of that icon player pick the other day. We've already got this same Dennis Burkamp. I was hoping I'd get the 93 foot birthday one. Maybe we still will. Who knows? But I'm going to Evo, hopefully, this regular Dennis Burkamp because I kind of want to save the red one because I like the red. I don't want to lose the red on him. However, I've been told that it's very possible that I won't be able to because I already have an evolution version of this player. How dumb is that? So I'm actually going to have to evolve the red Dennis Burkamp. Now, hopefully he becomes real nice because I actually really dislike the 92 version. It's why I haven't used him very much. But once he gets the upgrade, he's got insane passing insane dribbling, good pace, and then reasonable stats elsewhere with very, very, very good play styles. And of course, gets the five-star skill moves. So we are going to start this evolution process. I've got 217,000 coins in total. So I'm now down to 17,000 coins. We've got to begin our coin boost again all the way up. As you can see, we are also evolving William Saliba. I just need to win one more game um by two goals to get him up to a 90 we will be stuck we will be carrying on with him first before we go elsewhere the other thing that we're going to be doing during today's video is com trying to complete some of the irish related uh, content the st patrick's day related content and also the foul cow which is why we've got three la liga players in there i was using okafor i finished evoing him up to a 90 rated however i really don't like him so he's coming out of the team and gabriel jesus 90 rated is going into the team and I really do like this 90-rated Gabriel Jesus, which is a bit surprising because he hasn't got playstyles, or at least very many. And I'm starting to feel like playstyles are so, so like powerful and dominant in this game. I didn't expect Jesus to be very good, but he's absolutely brilliant. So this is the team that we're using in our first few games. We've got some Evos to upgrade. We've got some objectives to complete. And then at the very end, we will have an insane amount of packs to go as well. Um, I am going to be playing in the 4-4-2, especially now with uh, Burkamp, you know, potentially getting a few little upgrades and stuff. I was trying the 4-1-2 on too narrow, but I need some players that have long ball pass plus to try that. But for now, this is going to be the team. Let's get into some games. All right, guys, as we begin our journey into qualifiers, uh, we have got another run of comments from yesterday's RTG. Once again, I'm just going to read down them this time instead of picking out certain comments because I actually found myself leaning towards picking the same comments over and over. And uh, that was uh, that was dumb. But to give a little bit of a preface of what went on here, um, I ended up getting stream sniped. I know, I know, right? But genuinely stream sniped my first four games of qualifiers. Um, just to kind of give a bit of a spoiler, I still won three of them. Um, and I lost one of them. And uh, this this person specifically here was the most toxic human being I have encountered on this game. Afterwards, he started abusing me in messages, uh, giving me all sorts of grief. Uh, he was in my stream and got banned in my stream. And uh, that's why the griddies and stuff were there. Because, uh, yeah, it was it was, it was was a bit frustrating to, to deal with what he had to say after the game. And uh, during a pause in the game as well. Um, however... We still got that dub, which was quite nice. Um, we've got Josh says, I can't speak for anyone else, but honestly, Nepo, I came across the RTG video randomly about four or five years ago, and that's when I started running my own. I've been watching your vids ever since, and I continue to watch them even when I don't play because of the vibes, my guy. Well, thank you very much. Um, I've always enjoyed your style over everybody else's as a personal preference, so as a long-term-ish viewer, keep doing your thing. Well, I appreciate that very much. And um, yeah, I think when I think back, to, when I thought back to Old Road to Glories, Old Road to Glories never used to last the game cycle. It was never what it was about. It was about get, like basically like road, road to Division 1, right? Um, once you hit Division 1 and won it, that was kind of the end because there wasn't really much progression beyond that. Fast forward to like FIFA 14, maybe FIFA 15, we started getting a few more things where Road to Glories became a bit more apparent. And then when SBCs came, that's when Road to Glories really became a big thing because... People wanted to know, how can I actually get the items in my club in the first place to build this SBC? How can I do this the most efficient way? How can I do this the cheapest way? And so there was a good reason to kind of follow that journey. But even back then, 
the amount of time I would spend on a road to glory. Like some of my RTGs, I was going back looking at them. Some of my RTGs, they only had like 400 games by the end, 600 games by the end. It was never like it is now. Like I'm at like I'm at about 2,000 games on this account alone this year. And when when you mention about um, you watch my RTG, it made you start your own RTGs. There's so many different RTGs I would actually like to run and follow and track and showcase because I think that now, well, I don't think that now, I know for a fact that now there are multiple different ways to play this game. And I would love to do like a no store RTG. I'd love to do an objective only RTG, a genuine Evo only RTG. I'd love to do an SBC only RTG. I'd love to do a first owner RTG. Like there's so many that I'd love to do, but the time required now to get what you used to get way, way easier before is uh is a big big difference um riley says we'll say it's awesome to hear some older style content coming back once in a while i would get on old road to glory and on my home page and i'd simply put it on for nostalgia and the discussions cheers net thanks for being here man i do appreciate it uh lilac lyx liax says i think it would be sick if ea started doing cups and tournaments where it had spc like requirements i.e minimum six players from the same club which would then have good pack or Evo-like rewards, and it would further encourage personalized teams. On the flip side of that, EA want to buy the best players and spend more money trying to get those players. Yeah, and, and that's where it comes down to, right? Like, it's a, it's a conundrum for EA to a degree because the more incentive they give people for playing the game to get things back to improve their team or their experience in general, the less incentive there is for somebody to go to the store and buy that pack and, you know, get out of that pack. However, there's a lot of packs in store that are terrible value, right? Most of them are untradeable. Even the tradable ones, for the most part, are terrible value. But look what happened when EA released an actually genuinely good value pack. That 750,000 coin pack. I know 750k is a lot of coins and 5,000 FIFA points that it would have cost you is a lot of FIFA points. You know, it's like a 35 pound pack. And I said this in the videos I made when people were opening those packs, and I'll say it again now, I'll reiterate it again now, right? If you don't put money on this game, I would still never ever say this pack is good enough for you to put money into this game, because it isn't. It, like, there is never a reason that you should actually spend money on this game. However, if you do already spend money on FC24, which is absolutely okay if you're one of those people, you know, like... People spend on entertainment and a lot, a lot of money, whether it be, you know, your subscription to Netflix or Apple TV or uh, Amazon Prime or whether it be some, you know, a flutter on the horses for Cheltenham last week or whatever it may be. People will spend their money on things that they get entertainment from. So if you are the sort of person that already spends money on this game and you already would have FIFA points on this game anyway or FC24 points on this game anyway... In that regard, that pack is well worth your 5,000 FIFA points. If, however, you do not spend money on this game, that pack is, in my personal opinion, definitely worth your 750,000 coins. You get an insane amount of high-level fodder, which allows you to go into the exchange and complete all sorts of other things, and you get a guaranteed icon. Now, okay, you might get one of the bad ones, you might get one that's worth less than the pack itself, but the trade-off was definitely, definitely worth the coins that you would have had to spend. And if I could get to 750k again before the pack expires, I would open it again, right? And so when it comes to like EA rewarding people for gameplay, there was a there was a point to this whole uh, this whole story. When it comes to EA rewarding people for the gameplay in a regard of like you said, like, you know, imagine a tournament or a cup where when you win it you get like a plus 1 evo. And all, like, it, it can be applied to absolutely anyone. So even if you've got a 95 rated Pele, you can put it on him. He's now 96 rated, right? Something like that. That would be way less of an impact if the packs that EA released actually made sense for people to buy. Rather than store packs that prey on people's kind of like addiction to the game and addiction to the FIFA points and stuff. If it was just, hey, here's this insanely expensive, but really well valued pack where you're going to get two icons or you're going to get a promo icon or whatever it may be all of a sudden they can start increasing the return that you get from actually playing the game um compared to the store which would be absolutely brilliant 
Um, we've got uh, Shooter Boy says, I evoed a few Japanese women for my eventual full Japanese squad. And I grew to love them to the point where I'd keep them up to date with their games and would try to watch a few. There's something about playing with these cards for one, two, three hundred plus games that makes me want to follow them and their careers. It's strange, but I love it. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. Uh, Darren says, Nep, you should have a look at the Winter Wildcard Burkamp Evolution and see if it interests you as possibly inclusion for your Arsenal past and present. We are already working on that Burkamp in this video. Um, it, it's I I expected almost almost to be to pack the Dennis Burkamp um, Ultimate Birthday icon. I can't lie, the Winter Wildcard Burkamp, I don't like it at all. I don't think it's very good. I didn't enjoy it at all. I don't like it. I'm hoping that once we get it upgraded, it's going to be a lot better of a card and a lot more usable. But we are... It's actually quite funny. There's there's a massive irony for me right now because I'm finally getting to a point where my Arsenal team is getting very good. The 90 Salibur is a beast. Kivior is a beast. Hatley at left-back or Havertz at left-back do a real good job. We've got Scott at right-back. She does fantastic. We're now going to have this 94 Burkamp. We've got the red uh, Thierry Henry. We've got the 90 Gabriel Jesus. We can now focus on getting, you know, Beth Mead, Bukayo Saka, whoever, you know, like Thierry Henry uh, or the the, uh, the new Burkamp uh, icon. We've got a few other cards that are starting to come into contention of actually being usable again. And it's interesting because I'm finally getting a, a, a decently usable team. And the way I've played the game has changed. And if I had a team this good with this 90 Salibur, for example, a month ago, it'd be a different story because I would be sitting here being like, oh my God, this is perfect for me. Like, look at all these high rated cards have actually got useful stats. But now I'm kind of developing this whole like long ball to big man play style. I only have Kivior that has long ball pass plus. I only have, I don't have anybody that has aerial plus. And I really think aerial plus is an incredible play style plus in this game. So it's like, on the, on the one hand, it's a bit frustrating that I've finally got a really good Arsenal team and it doesn't suit how I want to play the game. But on the other hand, it's frustrating because we've now got actually some insane players like Rauld or like Zambrotta or like, I can't even remember who off the top of my head, that I would really like to use. And so I'm going to do what the guy said in the last video, not deep it, play with who I want, try and include as many Arsenal players as we can and enjoy that. That's the first stint of our, of our qualifiers, guys. Let's go live. All right, guys. For the last few games of qualifiers before we get our weekend league qualifier rewards and our rivals rewards, the fantasy upgrades are in. Werner upgraded. Rolfo. Aspas. Ulrich. Alhanoglu. Stanway. We'll try and fit as many as we can. Marmouche and Adley all upgraded. Um, who else got an upgrade? Lise Melu did. Jan Kuto did. I'm not really interested in those two. Andreva, I'd like to play with him. Martins will get on the bench as well. I'm going to try and fit as many of these into the actual team as we can. Andre and Canate was a no. None of those players got upgraded either. So, I want to try and fit as many in as possible. So, the Bundesliga players look like the best option. Marmouche and Adli both have striker left mid. Ulrich as well. Alhanoglu, Aspas. Rolfo's just got to go in, hasn't she? So we'll throw Rolfo in. We'll do that. That's her in. On to Kem straight away. Werner's got to go in. We'll pop him in there. Um, Fullerick. Maybe like Fullerick and... Adley, perhaps? Andre would be hard because of like leagues. Martins... He gets the Dutch link with Dennis Burkamp. He's got left mid, but Martin's in. We're still on 32 chem. I don't think I can get Kalhanoglu in without causing massive... Okay, we only lose one chem with Kalhanoglu. I think the three icons we've got is enough to get us some, uh, some really tidy options in there. I really want to use one of these bigs. I really want to use uh, Maramouche because he's got Aerial Plus. We only lose one chem with him as well. All right, that's all right. Um, now, in terms of the manager, what are we? We're Bundesliga manager, which we don't need. Can't use female manager either. Could get a Swedish manager. I think a Swedish manager would be ideal. A Swedish manager would get Rolfo. Ro, Rolfo. Uh, all chem. We go Sweden, Bosch. 
yeah, the League F part doesn't really matter. 32 out of 33 chemistry with four of these brand new upgraded cards in and a whole bunch on the bench. I'm all about that. Now, obviously, we've been using um, 3 5 2 for the last couple of games. We're going to car carry on with that. So let's figure out what we're going to use. Kivior, Saliba, Rolfo is going to go left mid. Maybe DM. Um, Xavi can now come into that center mid. Martin's on the right. No. Xavi can go back out to that right-hand side. Martin's in at camp. Bruno Fernandes, Dennis Burkamp together. Rolfo, Xavi, Werner Marmouche. Oh, let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go and play some more games. And... Uh, how we go all right guys to end the uh, gameplay section we are back into the uh, final qualifier games and uh, one thing that i actually did for these games here is i changed my formation um something that i don't do very often i seem to get very set in my ways whether it's working or not i seem to get very set in my ways and quite a few times i did actually deviate from the 442 and i went into the 4321 and i hated it then i played draft in the 4122 and the draft was really good and i loved it and i was like okay 4122 narrow is my formation so i tried 4122 narrow I had a few nice games with it, but I really just didn't like the formation very much at all. Uh, now I've switched to a 3-5-2. The team's not set up perfectly for the 3-5-2, but it is set up for the 3-5-2. And uh, it's weird, isn't it? Because I would never have thought to put the team together like this myself or, or put my player instructions together like this myself. But the team, the, the instructions I got from Dave, uh, it, it's, it sets you up so that you defend in a 4-4-2. The striker drops back, it all comes back, you know, your defence moves across, you're defending a 4-4-2. Then you attack with your three at the back and then your other players going forwards, including your wingers overlapping. And it makes for the extra player offensively, which is actually really, really good, especially for counters. And um, it, like, I would never have thought of playing three at the back. I would never have thought of putting this formation together, this tactic together, this group of players together. And yet it works really really well and uh i've i've won every game that i've played with it so far and uh, even against this guy this guy here he was toxic as hell he was sending me mad abuse after the game because i beat him but he was really good um and so you know he's got this uh premium super premium red verna i don't know how he scored that mind you he's got the like the you know the kind of premium red foot champs version so he's obviously like a really competent foot champs player as well he was just really good and uh yeah I, I was i was when i went through one down in my head i'm like okay this isn't going to be good but you see that there that's exactly what i was talking about right that's the kind of long ball pass plus to the big and marmouche didn't even need to use his head but just having that long ball pass plus opportunity to get it into him was really really big and again there i know it was verna i actually got lucky to get the ball back here i know it was verna that i chipped it into but i'm really getting into that good habit of using the kind of like balls in uh like that um D7 Sport says, yeah, I used to love these daily discussions. It was part of my routine when I got back from school or work. Happy to see him. I'll be coming back. Thanks for always uploading. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, Gerald says, I'm with you here. I have a huge connection with my Wolves Evo RTG. I know how they play. I know their pros and cons and enjoy the challenge of using this side brings. I just need more Evos to develop my 87, 88 rated players who are now well behind the curve. Plus one idea you had was a banger. Appreciate the content as always. Exactly that, right? It's... It seemed like, and this, listen, what, what I have to keep telling myself all the time as well is this is the first ever iteration of evolutions in the game. I would like to hope next year would be better. Maybe it won't be, but I'd like to hope it would be. And the fact that this is the first iteration of evolutions, it's, they've done a great job, right? I would like to hope, because at, at the moment you've got like the meta players, the meta teams, then you've got loads of insane SBC cards that are like high level quality top end cards then you've got like other other cards like this like Merton's Martin's card that we're using that I really like like um the uh Lavelle and players like that who are really really good and just don't get any attention in the game because I actually I couldn't even tell you why to be fair but and then you then you've got like your standard cards you know your Mbappe's your Van Dyke Golds things like that then you've got like 95% of Evos. And there are some Evos that are very good, that have been very good, that have been very overpowered. You know, Pep's Legacy was definitely one of the best. Um, there's been a few others like the, the Evo right now that makes a player five-star, five-star, I think is actually going to be a banging Evo for a lot of people. It's going to bring a lot of players into contention in people's teams. 
But yeah, like even for me now, it's like a few of these Evos, I can take like El Nene up to a 90 rated card, but he's still absolutely atrocious. And it would be good to get... I'm not saying that every Evo card has to be like up there with the top, top, top end players, but it would be good to get the uh, the cards up there with kind of like the best SBC players that we've got. That would be nice. Like that Timo Werner, so done broken. Why can't my Nketiah be that good? Like well, literally why? I, like, like I would pay so many coins for it. Um, <clears throat> and some other people that wouldn't be able to bother to get the coins or whatever would pay FIFA points for it. <clears throat> so I don't know why we can't have that. Um, Obi Wan Kenobi says, "Hey, Net, based on what we know about EAC, about <laughs> sorry, let me start that again. Based on what we now know about EAC's evolutions, what are your expectations for the next game's Evo evos, and what's a realistic change they should make it better?" Um, I, I honestly want to do a video on its own, talking about how I would personally develop evolutions and how I think evolutions should go. Because and there's that big again, guys, chip ball up, header down, goal. Um, because I think a I've run out of time for right now, and b I think it's something that requires me to put actually a bit of time and dedication into understanding what I do want from it and what I think would work for it. But we end up going nine and one. Let's get our rewards. All right, guys. So we did manage to clutch up and close out rank two. Got a nine and one. Uh, we lost to um, a viewer actually, a really good player. A bit of a tough loss because it was a tough. He was really good with a really good team, um, and it was a cheesy goal that opened up the scoring. And I was chasing the game from there. But other than that, I mean, new formation for me. The three-five-two is playing well. Um, the T like, and it makes a big difference. Obviously, playing with the best players in this game. But you never really recognize or appreciate how much until you start playing with them. And even this team that I'm playing with now, there's some problems with this team. Uh, Dennis Burkamp just isn't very good. I'm hoping that that will change once we get him fully evoed up. I didn't like Marmouche. Werner is insane. I actually thought Martins, what did she get? Two goals, two assists in four games. I think she is unreal. Unreal. Um, Rolfo's brilliant. Uh, everybody else in the team is actually brilliant. Aspas I really liked when he came on. Burek as well. Alan Oglu, I know he's brilliant. Kandreva was very good. I didn't like Adley, which is weird because I'm really enjoying the big man meta at the moment. Didn't like Adley. Thought Stanway was unbelievable. I only brought on one game, I believe. Yeah, one game. She got an assist as well. Literally unbelievable for me. However, let's get our qualifier rewards first. And then we'll get our rivals rewards after. And we end up with, of course, I just want coins now. Um... Some nice packs, isn't it? A prime gold players pack. Go on, give me a special EA. No special in the first one. English, though, so could be a walkout. It is. It's Trent Alexander-Arnold. We'll take those coins. Uh, everything else is discard. Uh, we obviously need to get back up to 200,000 coins to Evo up um, Kai Havertz as well. Small rare gold players pack. No special cards. It's going to be Kalhanoglu. So an 85 at least. Just the 185, though. Everything else discard yet again. We are also left with another small rare gold players pack. No special again. Like an inform or something, yay. Come on, nice me. Uh, it's a full discard pack. That's unfortunate. And then last but not least, what does that get us up to for coins right now? We're up to like 70,000 coins already. A rare mega pack. No special card, guys. Swiss. Goalkeeper. It's going to be Cobel. Um, be a double walkout for me. Come on. It's not. At least it's a walkout. At least it's some coins. Um, he will go onto the trade pile. The Hunters will keep. Um, all of that can go. Catalyst will keep. All of this stuff can go. So it's not bad. Um, it's not worth the stress. I actually think in terms of time versus efficiency versus kind of like ease of reward, I actually think the six win reward is the best. You get some really nice rewards for it, and it's really easy to get to six wins. However, we're up to 77,000 coins. And in terms of Dennis Burkamp, Burkamp, I think I need to... Uh, yeah, play one more game and get two more assists with him. So I'll do that on squad battles so that we'll move him into the next uh, the next tier. And uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of squad battles as well for the objectives that are there because I wouldn't mind just getting these polished off. Um, the Oh, we've got some stuff done here. Oh, the daily play. We've got, so we've got some more rewards, guys. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting like the Falcao polished off and whatever else is there polished off, the St. Patrick's Day polished off, because wouldn't mind trying these guys out as well, you know? Ogbene apparently is broken in game, he's overpowered. O'Sullivan looks decent, we need to do some stuff with her as well. So it will be worth uh, it'll be worth our while 
uh, having a having a game or two of those and trying to develop and find and understand a real good balance of team of what we like, what we want to use, what's good to use, and just try and find that kind of middle ground um, right there. So uh, we'll open these packs here. We get an 84 by 5 at the end as well. So hopefully, uh, you know, Bukayo Saka, Beth Mead, even I'd even take the 83 Dennis Burkamp because the what sorry the 93 Dennis Burkamp but of course Thierry Henry there's two of him in packs EA give me one of them give me one of them give me an Allison or an Edison as well never mind it's two back to back Bobby Firmino's and then we've got an 83 by two no special damn my luck this uh this last week has not been very good it's literally two 83s now before we do get our rivals rewards an 84 by five. Not a special. French. DDM. It's going to be... Oh, dear. It's only... Uh, what's her name? Is it Henry? Yeah. Oh, at least no dupes. We've got some other stuff to grind, though. All right, guys. After having a think about what I wanted to do with the Rivals Rewards, I've come to the conclusion that for this week, I would like to take option two, which is the Rewards Doubled and Untradeable. Uh, reason being, I would really like to get the crafting upgrade done and dusted as quick as possible to just get it finished and move forwards. And uh, this just gives a lot of good fodder, doesn't it? 250Ks, two jumbo premium golds, two, four jumbo premium gold packs, 284x5s, 286x2s, bit of XP as well, which I actually don't think sends us to the new level. Oh, we've got two. Maybe it does. <clears throat> it does. Oh, okay. <laughs> It gives us a stadium theme. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I've still got about 70, I think, of the SBC crafting objectives to go. 59 I've got, 59. Um, so I want to get those done. And off the back of this, we should be quite close to actually finishing it because the Jumbo Premium Gold Packs will obviously give us like, you know, six, seven players each. If we get any big players, they'll go straight into the exchange, which will give us more big players. Um... Yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy there, but uh, that's the plan. And hopefully we hit a Saka, a Mead, a Burkamp, or an Henri. You know, it would be nice to pack one of the players. I, I did think with the amount of grinding that we've done this week, with the amount of packs we've opened, I did honestly have a feeling that we would hit at the very least Beth Mead. It wasn't to be, but we're still going to focus on working towards getting the Arsenal players, the best Arsenal players in the team, and uh, having fun with them so some nice chem styles some nice consumables and whatnot uh coming into the club right here if i do get a mass of duplicates I'll, I'll quickly go and deal with them um but uh hopefully hopefully we'll just uh oh tonali locatelli brilliant we'll uh we'll be able to just mosey through all of it without uh, any issues so the four bad packs the four boring packs have been opened leaves us with eight packs We've got the Jumbo Premium Gold Players Packs. I love these ones. 24 players. We've got an inform in this one as well. Sweden. Striker. It is going to be uh, Gio Keres, which of course is brilliant because he is very high rated. 87 rated on him. Only two dupes in the club, in, in, in the uh, pack altogether, which isn't so bad. And uh, yeah, the 87 rated inform. Who knows what SBCs we're going to do with that. Uh, Jumbo Premium Gold Players Pack number two. No special card this time around. Hopefully that's Luka Modric. It is Luka Modric. So there you go. We've got another 87 uh, for the exchange. Uh, which is great because I need to start building that big fodder up. My club is bare bones at the moment. We've got a rare players pack. No special in this one. French. Go on, be Mbappe. Just give me an Mbappe. Not Mbappe. Um, Lacazette and Mancini to throw away. We've probably thrown away what ten players at the moment, so enough for one pack. But I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind it too much. I don't mind it too much. I don't think No Man Left Behind is necessarily worthwhile. Damn, a lot of players to throw away um, at this stage in the game because it's actually ridiculously cheap and ridiculously easy to get uh, cards in your club. So uh, we're going to get Thomas. Pa wow, an eighty-four by five that is just eighty-fours and Jesus, one eighty-five and four eighty-fours. Kind of glad I didn't take it tradable now because that tradable would have been terrible. Here we go. We have got ourselves Azur. No, Frankowski. It is going to be Frankowski. Is it a double walkout? It's not. It is just Frankowski. 
and uh, he will go into the exchange as well. What rating is he? He's 87 rated. And um, Fixby, I'm off there as well. Um, and she can go into the bin. And then we've got two 86 by twos. Hopefully, some really good stuff. Now, this is going to be a double walkout. So it's going to be Palhinia. Guaranteed double, which means it's a guaranteed double special. Palhinia the first. And alongside him, come on, give me like an 89. I don't even mind if it's like a duplicate Sawloth or something. <laughs> and there you go. Oh, no, wait. It's the, I thought it was Sawloth. It's an 87 and an 87. Statch might be a dupe. He is. Uh, right, let me go and put him into the exchange. Um, because... Yeah, I don't want to throw 87s away. And uh, wouldn't it be nice... EA, wouldn't it be nice to give us... I, I tweeted about this, I talked about this before, but wouldn't it be nice to give us a few different exchange options? For example, a Team of the Week exchange. You know, you put a Team of the Week in, you get an 80 by 10. Uh, you put a Icon in, uh, you get an 85 by 10. You put um, a Foot Birthday or an Ultimate Team Birthday in, you get an 83 by 10. Things like that could be really, really cool uh, from EA, but uh, maybe we'll get that for Team of the Season or something like that. But uh, here we go. We've got our last 86 by 2. Overall, this has kind of done exactly what I wanted it to do. Uh, it's kind of been exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, with giving us fodder to complete these the uh, crafting thingy my bobby. We get ourselves an 88 Joshua Kimmich there and an 86. And uh, you'll see the culmination of all of that in the next episode. But for today, to end with, we've got a 19 players pack, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be Renard, come on. B. Renard, come on. Don't be in Bok. Damn it. Thanks very much for watching. And I will see you next time. I'm out. Peace.